Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome to episode three, yes, of my Discord bot tutorial. Uh, in this episode, we will be sh I will be showing you how to uh, post a random image or a random sentence or just text, whatever, from a list of possible um, images or sentences. So um, I'm gonna start with images because, well, I'll do both. So first, I'll show you how to add the images to your bot. Right click up here, click add new folder, and then name it whatever you want. I'm going to be posting only the latest, freshest memes. So I'll call my folder appropriately, name my folder appropriately, and then just drag your images in. Before you can send them, uh, make sure you select them all and go down here and set them to copy always, or, or copy if newer, sorry. Um, and make sure the build action is set to content. And this, doing these two things will make sure that they are included in your bot and you don't get an error. So uh, before we continue, uh, this commands variable, we're going to need it when we define commands. And as long as we define all our commands in this function right here, we'll be fine. But we wanna do a little bit better with our organization. So we're gonna go ahead and um, instead of defining this variable here, uh, see, we're doing two things at once in this line. We're defining the variable by saying var commands, and then we're also assigning it by saying commands equals this. So we can split that up, var commands. Uh, like that. Um, but that's still uh, defining the variable so it only exists inside this function. We can't use it in other functions. So in order to define it, so it can be used by other functions. We're gonna take that line, stick it up here. And that's all we need to do for that. So I'm actually gonna delete this function because it's not really used. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to create another function which will define the meme command. Uh, register meme command, because that's what this function will do. And we're gonna call that function right here. So if you don't understand what's going on here, uh, the way it works is the code, this in uh, my bot, it executes from top to bottom. So it starts here, it creates the Discord client, it registers commands, creates the command service. It gets to this function call right here and it says, oh, okay, this is a function. Let's find it, oh, here it is. And then it executes all the code in here from top to bottom. And once it gets to the bottom of here, it jumps right back here and finishes the rest of this code. So, um, you could just write all of our code right here from top to bottom and not worry about taking any of it out. But um, taking it out just helps to organize it a little bit better. And that's the beauty of programming. You can organize it however you want. So let's go ahead and register this meme command. I'll say commands dot uh, create command. We'll say meme. So you just type exclamation mark and then meme, and it'll uh, call this command. And when you call the command, let's do this code. Eh, it always does that. So this right here is actually um, a function, uh, but it is, it's a really short way of writing a function that you know you'll only need to call in one place. So um, we're passing the function to do. So basically when you call the command in Discord, it calls this function. Um, so that's how that works. And this is the input to the functions. So we can say, um, in order to send a meme, I will say e.channel.send file. That is how you send an image. And then uh, the only argument is the file path. So that would be mem slash mem1.jpg and you gotta say await oh, before it or else it won't work. All right, so if we run it and pull up Discord, I was testing it before, but you can say meme and it sends a meme. But as you can see, it only posts the same meme over and over. So if that's what you want, then there you go. You can stop this tutorial right here. But uh, we want to post all three of them randomly, right? So in order to do that, we need to make a list of the memes and then select randomly from that list. 
So um, to make that list, we need to use what's called an array. That's how you represent lists in C Sharp and most languages actually. Uh, so if we are going to create uh, a string, which is like uh, just text, we could say string freshest memes. But that would only hold one fresh meme, so freshest meme. If we want to have multiple memes, a list of memes, we add these little square brackets here. And then we can say freshest memes. I mean, you can name variables whatever you want, but um, it would not be accurate to call this freshest memes because it can only hold one meme. So now it's a list of memes. And we can, uh, it's an empty list of memes. So in order to add the memes to the list, we'll say freshest memes equals new string list. And then we use these brackets to say, hey, we're going to uh, tell you what memes go in here. And then I'm just filling them in. And I named them one, two, three, but you can name them whatever you want as long as the names you, you just type in the full path to the image right here and it'll work just fine. All right, so let's create a variable right here, string meme to post. And then um, let's delete this and we can put meme to post right here. And so here we could uh, just type meme mem1.jpg. Uh, but that's the same problem. So even though we have, we set meme to post to this and then we pass that into here, that would do the exact same thing as before. It's only posting this one image over and over. So what we can do is access this list. So freshest memes. And then in order to access an element of the list, we use these things again. And in, in, in between them, we type which element we want to access. So we can say zero, which uh, is the first element, or one, which is the second element, or two, which would be the third element. It's in C sharp in most languages, um, the lists start at zero, which is kind of tricky to get used to. But once you do, it is a lot easier to work with. Um, but that's just something you'll have to get used to. So this is the zeroth element. This is the first element and this is the second element. So if we want to do the first meme, which would be mem1, we could type freshest meme zero and that gets this one. Um, but we want to pick a random number, not the first one every time, which is, this is the exact same thing. So let's create a variable, random meme index. We can set that to zero and pass that into here. But it's still the same thing because random meme index is just always going to be zero, which is always going to get this element and post that. So in order to get an actual random number, we need to go up here and create a random number generator. This is the actual random part. So random rand. And then in here we can say rand equals new random which is short for random number generator. So finally, what we can do is int random meme index equals random number generator next. So next is a function under the random number generator that generates a new random number. That should have been self-explanatory, but I explained it anyway. Um, so it takes a, a parameter max value so it generates a random number between zero and whatever value you pass in. So we could just say pass in three because, oopsie, because um, we know there's three elements. But if we delete one, then it'll, it could throw an error if it tries to send the third element because there is no third element. Or if we add more elements in the future, we'd have to come back here and update this. And that's just messy. The best way to do it is to have it just calculate how many elements there are. So in order to do that, we say freshest memes dot length. Look how easy that is. So um, this will now post random memes. Let's summarize here. We have our list of memes. They're in files right here. Um, this number, we create a variable random meme index and we set it to a random number between zero and the number of memes that we have. Then we take this number, this is a random number 0, 1, or 2, and we get that meme and assign that to a variable. And then we pass that meme, that variable, into here, which sends that meme. Okay, 
Let's look at our memes. Boom. So as you can see, sometimes you get the same meme multiple times in a row, but that's what you would expect when you have a random number generator. And of course, if you have a ton of memes, that would be less prevalent. Um, if we want to send text, we can do string random text, texts, plural, random texts equals new string. So this is a list of strings, but this time instead of them being uh, paths to files, it's just going to be text that we can post. Um, EFG, JJKLMNOP, QRSTV, WXYZ. So now, um, down here, if we want to do uh, post text instead of a meme, we can just replace freshest memes with, oops, I copied it instead of pasting it. Freshest memes with random texts in both places. And then instead of sending a file, because it's gonna go through all this and pick one of these randomly and then try and send that as a file, well, HRJK element OP is not a file. Uh, we could make it a file, but instead of sending a file, what we wanna do is await e.channel.send message. So these variable names aren't really accurate. Meme to post, this is no longer a meme to post, it's a random text to post, but uh, the computer doesn't know, so whatever. Run the bot. Now when we type meme, it puts a random one of those letter groupings. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the random texts because I prefer my memes. To do, and then you gotta set this back to freshest memes. All right, there we go. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, if you've enjoyed, please subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming. Um, uh, one of the most common things that has been requested is a music bot, so that will be coming very soon, I promise. Thanks for watching.